हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक होप यू आर डूइंग गुड लेट्स कंटिन्यू द प्ले लिस्ट विद दिस वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर सम ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन चैप्टर नंबर फोर इंट्रोडक्शन टू प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग हियर इज द लिस्ट ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर वी नीड टू गो थ्रू द डिफरेंट स्टेजेस टू सॉल्व अ पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम वी कैन इजिली अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू सॉल्व एनी प्रॉब्लम बाय ड्रॉइंग फ्लो चार्ट इवन फॉर दैट वी कैन राइट द एल्गोरिदम there is one more topic that is pseudo code it is nothing but a informal way of writing the steps so let's go through these topics in short and try to understand the questions based on it here is the problem solving cycle which we will follow to solve a particular problem first of all we have to try to understand the problem by analyzing it after understanding the requirement of that problem or analyzing the problem we need to find out the solution for the same and how you will generate the solution by writing the algorithm or by drawing the flow chart once we understood the step properly to solve a particular problem then we will write the code for the same and after writing the code we have to make sure that it is working fine by testing it and it should be without any error so we should debug it also so by following these simple steps we will solve any problem we know that programming languages we use to solve the real world problem so first we need to understand the problem or analyze the problem properly by understanding the requirement to solve that particular problem then we will be writing the algorithm or you can draw the flow chart for the same so that the solution will be clear third step is obviously write the code for the same and finally we need to test that code with the testing itself we will come to know whether we are able to solve that problem properly or not all right then let's move ahead we have one question based on the problem solving we need to define decomposition based on this chapter you may get question for 2 marks 3 marks or even for 4 marks in which you may need to draw the flow chart write the algorithm or even you may get the question where you need to write the pseudo code also this question will be asked for 2 marks so you will be writing the definition of the decomposition and draw the diagram too all right let's try to understand what is decomposition decomposition is breaking down a bigger problem into smaller one let's try to understand this concept with one simple example suppose you are going for a educational tour from the school or college and there are total 60 students in the class you know how difficult it will be for a teacher to manage all 60 students now in this situation what teacher will do teacher divided the student into three batches of 20 20 20 each what is this so this is nothing but a decomposition we are breaking down the bigger problem into smaller one with the help of that now to handle this smaller portion of the bigger problem will be very easy look at the diagram bigger problems are divided into two parts again this part one is divided into sub problems hope you understood decomposition very well moving ahead to the next topic that is flow chart what is flow chart it is a pictorial representation of the solution we need to find out the solution for the particular problem then how we will write the solution there are different ways to write the solution one is to draw the flow chart second one is to write the algorithm and the third one is to write pseudo code out of that we will discuss first one as it is a pictorial representation so we will have some pictures what are these pictures these are nothing but the symbols which we will use to draw the flow chart the first step is always to write start and the last step will be stop for both we will use oval shape to solve a problem we required some input and after taking input we will display the output also for both we will be using the symbol of parallelogram as we know we follow the approach of input process and output so for processing we will be using rectangle if based on the decision we need to execute certain statements then for that we will be using decision box it is a diamond or you can call it as a rhombus all these shapes will be connected using arrow symbol 2 signify the flow of the control if your flow chart is lengthy it will not fit in one page that time you can use the connectors to continue to the next page before proceeding to draw the flow chart to solve a particular problem we will discuss some other ways to write the solution also 
The second way is nothing but to write an algorithm. What is the algorithm? It is steps. We will be writing these steps in a normal English like sentences. That we are gonna discuss further. Let's move ahead to the third option. To solve any particular problem, we can also write pseudo code. Now what is that? Try to understand when we write the algorithm, we need to follow certain rules. Always the first step will be start and the last step will be stop. In between here are the components of the algorithm. We should be mentioning the input, then the processing and finally what will be the output. So in case of algorithm, we need to follow certain format. That restriction we don't have with pseudocode. It's an informal way. You know what is the difference between formal and informal. You have written many letters when you were in school. Informal letters and formal letters. Right. That is only the difference. In case of algorithm, we need to follow the rules. But in case of pseudocode, there are no rules. The way you want, you can write the solution. But you should understand it. Alright, that was all about theory. Now let's try to work on, on the examples. I have taken one simple example in which we need to calculate simple interest. For that we will be writing algorithm, writing pseudocode and drawing the flowchart. First of all, let's check out the algorithm. When we write algorithm, always the first step will be start and the last step will be stop. For writing algorithm for the simple programs, we will follow the approach of input, process and output. So second step will be the input. To calculate simple interest, we need principal amount, rate of interest and time. What's the next step? That is process. Processing means what? We are calculating it. So here is the formula to calculate the simple interest. PRT divided by 100. The final step is output. Whatever we have calculated that we need to display. So here is the next step. Display the calculated simple interest. So in this way we will be writing the algorithm. It's very simple for you I know. Okay then now let's proceed and write the pseudocode for the same problem. Pseudocode is an informal way of writing the steps. So we need not follow any rules. The way you want you can write normal English like sentences. The first compulsory step will be input. We are taking the required values followed by the calculation and finally we are displaying it. Now question may arise in your mind that both look similar then why there are two options. In case of algorithm we follow the rules but in case of pseudocode we don't follow the rules. We will write algorithm or pseudocode any one of them not both for writing the solution. Alright, we are done with algorithm and pseudocode. Now it's time to draw the flowchart. To understand easily, I have considered a very simple example. We will follow algorithm to draw the flowchart. Recall the algorithm, the first step was start. So to write start and stop, we use oval. What was the second step? We need to take the input. So let's write input and the required variable names. We need principal amount rate of interest and the term. You can see here we are writing arrow symbols to connect the shapes to each other to indicate the flow of the program. The third step was to calculate simple interest. For that we will use rectangle. The variable name I am taking simple interest. The formula is P into R into T divided by 100. We are done with input, we are done with processing. Now the next step is to output. So to display again we will use parallelogram. We need to display the simple interests. For that you can write print and the name of the variable is SI. The final step is stop. For stop also we will be using oval symbol. So this is nothing but our flowchart. Hope you enjoy drawing the flowchart. To understand how to write the flowchart, you should practice three types of programs. The first one is simple where we follow the approach of I, P, O, input, process, output. Second with conditional statement. Conditional statement means if, where we will be taking decisions using this rhombus or decision box. And the third type of program will be with the looping statements. In these also we will be using this decision box. So let's try to understand one more question which is based on the looping. 
here we need to calculate the factorial I hope you know the factorial. If I need to calculate the 4 factorial, generally we write 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. In this way we will be getting 24. It is nothing but a repeated multiplication from the given number to 1. Let's write the algorithm for the same. We know that first step will be start, last step will be stop. The second step will be input. Here we need to provide a number n for which we are calculating the factorial. Now let's try to understand logic of this program. We need to repeatedly multiply the number. Whenever we do the repeated task, we need loop. You can see here the loop is executing from the number to 1. But this is nothing but a multiplication. If you are feeling difficult to write the reverse loop, you can change the order. It doesn't make any difference. So it is starting with the 1 and going to that number. In this way we will design the loop. So what's the starting? Starting is nothing but 1. For that we can take one variable. It is going from 1 to the number. 4 is nothing but the number which we have provided. Look at this n. n is nothing but 4. So the loop is going to execute from 1 to n. Look at this statement. We are doing the same here. We know that operators are binary. They can multiply only two numbers at the same time. So what we are going to do? We are multiplying two numbers and we will get the result. With that result again we will multiply the next number. But to which number this 1 will get multiplied? Because we don't have any number to get multiplied with 1. For that we are taking one variable. You can take any variable name. I am taking factorial. Initializing it to 1. Now 1 will get multiplied to 1. So we will get the result 1. And to that result we will keep on multiplying the next number. That repeated multiplication we are doing using this expression. Let's try to dry run it. Initially the value of factorial is 1. The value of i is also 1. 1 into 1 will be 1. Next time the value of i will be 2. So 1 into 2 will be 2. Let's proceed in the same way. Next time the value of i will be 3. 2 into 3 will be 6. Finally the value of i will be 4. 6 into 4 will be 24. 24 will get initialized to the factorial and outside the loop we are printing it. So what will be the output? We will get 24. It is nothing but a factorial 4. In this way we got the output. It was simple. Hope you understood the logic. I hope you can write the pseudo code too. Here it can be. Taking the input, initializing factorial variable to 1. Here is the for loop which will execute from 1 to n and multiplying the factorial variable with i. For loop is getting over here. After for loop we need to calculate because we need final result not the intermediate one. Now you know it's time to draw the flowchart. The first step is start for that we will use oval shape. The next step always will be input. We need to take one number that we will be taking in variable n. In the third step, we are initializing one variable factorial to 1. It is nothing but a processing step. So we will use rectangle for it. Followed by that expression, we need to write for loop. You know there are three steps in the for loop. First is initialization. Second is condition. And third statement is update statement. Initialization part is nothing but a processing part. So we will be using rectangle box for the same. Look at the second step now. We need to check the condition. For checking we always use decision box. The value of i should be less than equals to n. If it is less than equals to n then we will proceed. Otherwise we will stop the loop. There will be always two branches for the decision box. One for true and one for false. If this condition gets evaluated to true, what we need to write? That statement we will be writing now to the true side of the decision box. We need to multiply i to the variable factorial. So factorial is equals to factorial into i. After that we will be incrementing the value of i. This is a processing part so 
we have used rectangle box after that we need to increment i by 1 that is again a processing part so i am using rectangle box after incrementing the value we should check it whether it is less than equals to n or not so we will be proceeding to the decision box again if it is true it will get executed incremented again it will get checked in this way the value of i will be 1 then it will become 2 3 and if we consider n is equals to 4 it will go up to 4 but what if the value of i will become 5 then this condition will evaluate to false finally we will be printing the result that is nothing but a variable factorial where we will get the final answer for printing we will be using parallelogram we solved the problem we got the final output now let's stop it using oval so that was the flowchart for the factorial hope you got the point with that note here is a simple assignment for you what you will be doing you will be writing algorithm as well as flowchart for what for the program where you need to find out the greater of three numbers along with algorithm and pseudocode you will be drawing the flowchart also in your notebook either algorithm or pseudocode you will write in the comment box with that it will be clear to me that this video is adding some value to it so that's all for today's video in case of any doubt let me know in the comments below in the next video we will try to understand some important topics and the questions based on chapter 5 getting started with python until next time stay curious stay healthy i will see you in the next video